All right, we're back with Caroline Zucker. Before, I, I do want to ask you a little bit about the, the, the budgeting, because I know this has probably been one of the toughest years, and next year it may get even worse. But before I do that, there, there was a lawsuit filed uh, recently that had to do with sports. Um, a, a lot of the sports got cut um, recently because of, because of money. Um, and a lot of games got cut, and, and this lawsuit's being filed on behalf of a lot of uh, girls that, are, that play high school sports that feel that these cuts have disproportionately affected girls' sports. What do you think about the value of spending money on sports? Uh, the, you know, do, you, do you think sports is a high priority for you? Yes. You're, you're, now you're talking to someone who's been bumping that glass ceiling all, all the while and, and also very cognizant of the fact that Females did not have equal representation. Um, and then often times, Ron, you can keep some kid in school just because they have sports to play. Sports or music and band, sometimes it's not the academics that keeps the kids in school. It's these extra um, curricular things. And sports is a big one. So I, I would hate to see us do away with any sport because I know that that's what keeps a lot of kids engrossed and engaged in school so so you see them as very valuable to I do. somebody's development I do but you know what we did last year for the last two years we've been cutting equally across the board so we have not targeted arts or science or math or anything we have tried to put, be very um, sub subscription sub prescriptive <laughs> <laughs> and uh, trying to make sure that no one item is cut more than the other. So the same thing is happening with the, in the sports area. We've had to make some cuts in the sports area. We've had to reduce some of the stipends that we've given for the people that are involved in it. Like coaches I mean, and things Coaches, like that. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've just had to do that. That's equal across the board over all areas. How much money did you have to cut from the budget in 2009? 31 million. We were projected to, to do 40 million, but we were able to do 31 because we've been in a hiring freeze for the last um, three years at least. Um, and we also managed to save some money by not uh, moving forward with some of our contracted services from 2008-2009 budget, which is what helped us to only cut 31 million. When we say only cut 31 million, it was drastic. I mean, it's the schools are. You know, all of our data and literacy coaches are gone. Transportation, we've tightened up on that. We've just, every area has been hit. Every department gave back some money into the fund in order for us to, uh, to make the budget that we did, everyone. And, and how did you, did you get along with the Sarasota Classified Teachers Association? Did they, were there any big fights with them or None. did you come to an agreement on None. It? We came to an agreement. Wow. We realized that this is uh, the economy that we're in. It's throughout the, st throughout the state, throughout the country. And we recognized that this is just something that had to happen. And they negotiated, um, our, our attorney and our negotiating team negotiated with the union. There was nothing. No, I mean, it was just an amicable trying to do the right thing for staff as well as provide a good education for our children. How does 2010 look? Well, 2009, 2010, right now, where the budget will go to bed as it is, the only, with the $31 million uh, cut, the only thing is if the economy continues to, the revenues continue to decrease for the state, when they co come back for, uh, th like they're going to go back for a special session, our fear is that they're going to cut, cut us again. If they do that, that could really hurt us, but we have anticipated that, and we think they might cut us 4%, which would be $14 million. So if that happens, that money is there right now because we're anticipating being cut. So, um, and the, our five-day count, because you know we've, been, we've lost almost 2,000 students over the last two years. So we know that our student count, we're hoping it'll hold steady, but if it doesn't, we'll lose more money there. So if that happens, at the five-day count, we'll know. Whatever it is at the five-day count, that's when you look at all your schools and you see how your staffing is. We will restaff if we need to then, but after that we will hold steady because we will not move any students out of a classroom into another classroom 
to collapse classrooms because that will not be good for our students. So we, after the five-day count, we'll know where we stand. Sounds like you got more tough work ahead of you. Caroline, we're very lucky to have somebody in the school board like you. Thank you for coming on our show. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Time to do our Weasel of the Week. Every year the Republican Party, just like the Democrats, have a dinner that's their major fundraising dinner. And this year it was the Lincoln Day dinner, which occurred last week. And uh, there was a lot of interesting things happened at the Lincoln Day dinner. The guest speaker was Ed Rollins, who was Ronald Reagan's campaign manager. Might not have been the greatest choice of a speaker. Uh, the Republican Party probably needs to shed its image of... Uh, uh, an older party and, and, and express a more younger energetic theme and kind of having a, a, a half an hour reminiscing about Ronald Reagan probably wasn't the, the best thing in the world to do, but it, he was a big name. Um, the, the chicken was uh, boiled and overcooked and bad, <laughs> and, and I think that the party paid a lot of money for it. It was well attended. Uh, the past, uh, Senator Dieter was hilarious. She got up and talked about how she had been elected official for 25 years and none of the past chairmen had ever invited her to speak at a Lincoln Day dinner. She didn't really have to worry about the past two chairmen being there to be offended because they had walked out because the state committee woman for the party, Katie Bolin, had sat in their reserved seats and refused to move out of those seats, so they walked out of the dinner. So it was an interesting night, but maybe what capped it all off was probably the most weaselly move of the night was when Senator Mike Bennett got allowed to get up and speak. He uh, gave a plug to some of his favorite people, including Democrat State Representative Keith Fitzgerald, who he said was doing a great job. Unfortunately, Republican candidate Ray Pilon was sitting right in front of him when he said that, and uh, wasn't the right setting. We'll see you next week on Cloud 941.